When we knew we were to be without David today, um, Brian Stevens was one of the first people to get in touch and say, is there any way I can help? So never to refuse an offer, um, we said yes, and then thought of something. And it was Chris who thought of the brilliant idea um, of asking Brian to share with us um, the story of something that happened here, an act of wi great wisdom on part of the church, in the 1970s. Early so, time. Brian, early 70s. So, tell us what happened and what you did. Well, when this church was built, it had held a thousand people. It was designed for a thousand. All the, um, the pews went right back to where you come in through the glass swing doors, right at back there. Um, and there was two side um, aisles which was lined with these doors that went right to the back and there was a double door and it was a bit of a dog leg. And so when you, when you um, signed the register and we got married and you walked out with the girl you had dreams on your arm, there wasn't a lot of room. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in the congregation was getting small, especially in the evenings, there would perhaps only be 25 or 30 of us and in a church that hold a thousand, we looked a bit sparse. So it's during the um, ministry of the Reverend D. Glyn Evans that these alterations took place. Um, Glyn in those days often used to go to America and we used to have a, a pastor exchange. So he went there for about three months and for three months we'd have an American minister here and he would be our minister for the three months conducting services chairing deacons meetings and chairing the church meeting and doing all the pastoral work. And it was <coughs> while Glenn was in America at the Congregational Churches there, for, uh, he was been to America, and they'd seen their Congregational Churches, they're very much like we are now, painted, painted white. Um, all the woodwork before we had it done was all a very dark stain, like the chairs upstairs or the communion table, all this woodwork, the um, organ all around there, the doors, and everything was a, a dark stain and it, and it looked a bit um, sombre. It was obviously correct for the time when the church was built in, in opened in 1850 in Victorian times, but it's very much a Victorian um, decor. It hadn't been changed, it'd been, the church had been decorated in that time. I think the church was decorated in about 1950, I think I can remember, but it was still stained with a dark stain. So it's still, and I think the walls were dark cream, if I remember right. So it looked a bit sombre for today's standard. So we thought, well, at the church and the members thought, and, and Glyn said, we've got to do something to make it more acceptable for the 21st century. And in coincidence, we own the, the property, the land next door where the, where the office block is now. That's another story, I could tell you that another time. So um, we own that. And that became vacant at the time we were thinking of doing the alterations. So the money we got for vacant possession for selling that land went a long way for paying for the alterations. So all the old pews were taken out. Um, the, old, the floor was, t a new floor was put in. The floor was on two levels. There was a level and it went up about that much to, to your pew. So there's a lot of timber. <laughs> and all the pews were taken out and destroyed. Um, they weren't valuable, they were just, I believe, pitch pine. The only valuable bit, bit of timber was the rail along the top of, which I believe was oak. Uh, but that was all taken out. The pulpit was lowered, the pulpit top came up to here, about, about there, so it's been lowered about, well, about half a metre, is it a metre, something like half a metre, I think. So that was, low. and that, that caused, uh, that was an easy job for the contractor. The contractor was Cornson Simpson. And Cornson Simpson's carpenters, I don't think, were prepared to tackle it. So we got a, um, a, a, a Mr. Wells who uh, had a workshop over St. Leonard's Avenue and he'd made some display cabinets for the museum of course in the past and he was willing to undertake lowering of the... I think the difficult part was the winding staircase to get that down. So all the pews were taken out, as I say, and it was carpeted in the new pews. Um, nowadays, I think we sit downstairs, we can hold 140-odd people, whereas before 
we could hold 500 down here. So the whole, and 500 upstairs, it's made 1,000. Um, I think now we can hold, when we had to do a count, when we had the songs of praise here in the 19, mid 1950s, we had to find BBC and what now, and we'd get hold, and we did a count of the seats, and I think I tallied up 650, which makes it about right with the 300 who'd be lost here. So it, 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 it's been decorated two or three, um, well, it was decorated in, in the 70s, it was done again about 2000 and two or three, and it's been decorated again now, and very light and bright it looks. And this is the way we thought, we thought it would be. And it, is that when the foyer was put in at the front? front yes, uh, yes it is. at the same time the foyer was, was put, the glass partition was put across there, and a copy bar was, uh, co copy bar was put in the corner. Yeah. The foyer was refurbished about 10, or 10, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, about that. Really. Something like that. Something that was refurbished and a new copy bar put in. And now, if, if we hadn't done that in the 1970s, you reckon that... that we might well not have, there might well not have been a church here by now. I, 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 found that, I don't think we'd have been here in Mill Street. We'd have been somewhere on the outskirts. And the, that's not too far perhaps when you think St Paul's Methodist that used to be in Harper Street, where the library is now, moved to, to Newnham Abbey to form Priory Street, the Priory Methodist Church. Um, the Mill Street Baptist, they moved up to form Brick Hill Baptist Church. In the meantime, the Anglicans closed three churches. Um, Trinity Church, which is now part of Bedford Sixth Form College. St Mary's Church, which is now a heritage centre. And St Cuthbert's Church, which is still a Christian church, but it's now a Polish Roman Catholic church. And they built a new church at Brick Hill, St Mark's. So it, it wasn't unusual in those days for churches to move out. But thankfully we, we stayed here. And we are looking at, we're a beacon for non-conformity in the church centre. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank you and your generation, don't we, um, for the wisdom of that sort of 50 years ago? Yep, yes. About that, isn't it? So yeah. I would like to challenge you then, or we would like to challenge you, to think between now and the closing prayers at the end of the service, what about the next 50 years? So drawing on the wisdom of the ages, uh, and all that was done then, the amazing vision here, um, what, would be, what would we pray for now for the next 50 years? And in the meantime, thank you very much, Brian. You can tell us the other story another well, time. Yeah, well, yeah that would be fantastic. Yeah. And we can't wait to hear. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. Clap. Thank you.